हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल पैथोलॉजी मास्टर माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ गोस्वामी आई एम द कंसल्टेंट पैथोलॉजिस्ट एंड आवर टू डेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ऑन द यूमेटिक फीवर एंड द यूमेटिक हार्ट डिजीज ओके सो व्हाट आर आवर लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स फॉर टू डेज टॉपिक सो आवर लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव इज एज फॉलो you need to understand what is rheumatic fever you need to understand the rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease introduction what is it our second objective is to understand the etiopathogenesis of rheumatic fever and the rheumatic heart disease so you need to understand etiopathogenesis and third you need to understand the morphology of rheumatic heart disease that how the particular lesion is look like in the heart fourth one is you need to understand clinical feature and finally treatment so this is the complete learning objectives that students should able to understand after the end of lecture so let's start the discussion what is rheumatic fever so guys this is the form of autoimmune inflammatory disorder it is a immunology immunologically mediated right it's an immunologically mediated inflammatory disorder and that will affect your multiple systems and this rheumatic fever develop particularly after you have the group a beta hemolytic streptococcal infection particularly streptococcal sore throat pharyngitis infection so guys this is the inflammatory response you need to understand that rheumatic fever is an inflammatory response to the i mean it's a inflammatory response after the streptococcal infection particularly in the throat region that is known by the name streptococcal pharyngitis so it will be caused by group a beta hemolytic streptococci infection and the strains that can cause this rheumatic fever is the streptococcus strain i mean beta hemolytic streptococci i divided into many strains so the common strains that lead to rheumatic fever is number 1 number 3 number 5 number 6 and number 18 beta hemolytic streptococci strain usually this disease develop in the age group between the 5 to 15 year of age it's the disease of children so suppose the socio economic condition is poor and your child is developing the streptococcal throat infection then it need to be treated or else uh, he or she can develop uh, rheumatic fever okay so rheumatic heart disease is a cardiac manifestation of rheumatic fever that we need to understand in our today's topic okay so we will understand how what is the etiopathogenesis of this rheumatic fever why it affect our multiple systems and why it particularly affect your heart that is known by the name rheumatic heart disease so we will see the etiopathogenesis okay so guys uh, you have to remember that uh, the initiation of this disease is start from the streptococcal throat infection by the group a beta hemolytic streptococci right so initially you will have infection in this region this is your pharynx so initially you will have the streptococcal infection by the group a beta hemolytic streptococcus and the associated factors that will lead to development of rheumatic fevers are overcrowding poor socio economic condition if the if you are living in overcrowded area your socio economic condition is poor you are not maintaining the hygiene if you have the family history if uh, uh, sometime there is a genetic susceptibility so all these susceptible factors will lead to development of rheumatic fever what happen okay so guys if you have the infection by streptococcus uh its antigen the streptococcal antigen will mimic like that of our certain organs of our body particularly heart so the antigen present in the heart is look similar the streptococcal antigen and the antigen over the heart is similar antigenic structure is somewhat similar so what happen your uh, your body will develop antibody against this antigen and this antibody will react with the streptococcal antigen as well as your heart antigen so in trying of killing the streptococcal 
throat infection they will also damage your heart and that is the mechanism underlying mechanism of the development of rheumatic fever so it's the mechanism this mechanism is known as a molecular mimicry so this disease developed because of cross reactivity guys so we can say that you will develop an auto antibodies that will cause the damage to the human tissue due to the cross reactivity between the epitope in the component of bacteria and the host epitope means antigenic structure the structure that act as an antigen is called as an epitope so you have the streptococcal infection its antigen is look similar like that of antigen in the heart right so the antibody will cross react with our heart antigen as well it will act against the streptococcal antigen as well as our heart antigen so this is called as a cross reaction because of molecular mimicry and it is one of the example of autoimmune disease so guys this is the basic of development of rheumatic heart disease okay this particular heart disease rheumatic heart disease can affect your mitral valve it can affect your mitral valve so you can develop mitral stenosis in the long standing case so now we will so until now we have covered the introduction as well as etiopathogenesis of rheumatic fever uh, now we will discuss regarding the morphology of the rheumatic fever and the rheumatic heart disease so guys until now it has been clear that uh, what is rheumatic fever right it's an cross reaction and the affection of the heart usually rheumatic fever affect many organs it's a multi systemic disease but affection of heart is known by the name rheumatic heart disease and our main interest is to understand uh, what morphological findings in, is seen in the rheumatic heart disease so that we will cover okay so guys uh, this uh, rheumatic heart disease particularly affect your valves right in the heart you have the many valves like that of mitral valve aortic valve pulmonary valves right it commonly affect the most common valve affected is the mitral one the mitral valve affected most commonly it's a most important mcq guys remember that the commonly it affects the mitral valve right and the least commonly affected valve is your pulmonary valve it is also important mcq so you have to remember that which valve is affected commonly so the mitral valve is affected most commonly right okay so guys the morphology of the rheumatic fever is divided into the two form right the first one is acute form and if the disease is long standing then it is known as chronic form so in the both phase the morphology is different so that we need to understand so first of all morphology of the acute rheumatic heart disease right first of all we need to understand what is the morphology in acute form so guys you have to remember that this rheumatic fever is affect the all layers of your heart particularly starting from the pericardium that is outermost layer it affect your middle layer as well that is myocardium and it will affect your inner layer endocardium as well that include the valve as well and as we have discussed common need affect mitral valve so your pericardium myocardium and endocardium all the layers are affected by rheumatic fever okay and in this acute form the particular lesion that is seen in usually in the myocardium is the ascoff body that is a pathognomic of the rheumatic acute rheumatic fever or rheumatic heart disease if you are asked in the exam that what is the diagnostic feature of rheumatic heart disease morphologically then your answer should be ascoff bodies right it's a pathognomic of rheumatic heart disease so you will see the ascoff bodies in the rheumatic fever so now i will teach you what do you mean by ascoff bodies what is the structure of this ascoff body so guys ascoff body 
is a focal collection of it's a focal collection of T lymphocytes right it's a focal collection of T lymphocytes this is the T lymphocytes clear then it is collection of plasma cells so mononuclear cells are seen particularly plasma cells right so it it consists of inflammatory cells and it will include mononuclear cell particularly macrophage so you can able to see the macrophage as well in the escov body and this macrophage are the activated macrophage and they will be plump just see this macrophage it's a plump macrophage these are the plump macrophage right that is known by the name anitsko cell it's given the name anitsko cell and in the cross section and the longitudinal section its appearance is look like a caterpillar the nuclear chromatin is caterpillar like so just see here uh, here i have seen the image of anitsko cell in the cross section and longitudinal section so this plump activated macrophage with caterpillar like nuclear chromatin is known by the name anitsko cell so the macrophage seen in the escov body is known as an anitsko cell so what is the diagnostic feature of eumatic fever so your answer should be escov body and what is the diagnostic feature of escov body then your answer should be anitsko cell clear so the escov body so this is your escov bodies seen in the eumatic fever it consists of t lymphocytes plasma cells and activated macrophage that is known by the name and its co cell so remember guy it's uh, guys remember it's a most important mcq right okay in the acute form your uh, valves also get affected right it affect your endocardium so it can affect your mitral valve and usually the affected valve will show the fibrinous exudate deposition that is known by the name vegetation so you can see the vegetation in the eumatic fever and these vegetations are seen along the line of the closure of valve it's a small vegetations it's seen suppose this is your valve then it is seen along the line of the closure it's a small vegetations and usually they are non destructive so this is all about the acute form of morphology of acute eumatic fever now i will teach you morphology in the chronic eumatic fever if you have the chronic eumatic heart disease then what will be seen so as you know in the chronic inflammation there will be fibrosis so obviously you have the fibrous scar and because of chronic inflammation and fibrosis your mitral valve exhibit a leaflet thickening that will get thickened because because of fibrosis the commissures are get fused and there will be shortening and thickening and the fusion of cordy tendini right suppose uh, this is your valve right if you have constant fibrous scar deposition as we have discussed the mitral valve is so the leaflet thickening and the commissural fusion there will be progressive fibrosis as well so what happen gradually you will have fibrous bridging across the valve commissures and gradually there will be calcification so this fibrous bridging across the valve commissures will give the valve appearance like that of fish mouth to see this appearance it's look like in fish mouth appearance or button hole stenosis so this narrowing of valve because of fibrosis is given one beautiful name that is fish mouth appearance or button hole stenosis and such name is given because valve is getting narrowed by fibrosis that's why the name is given so it's a most important mcq so guys in the acute form the pathognomonic lesion is escov bodies right and in the chronic form you will see the fish mouth or button button hole stenosis of the affected wall okay here i have not written one important lesion that is seen in chronic eumatic heart disease and that is the presence of macallum plaque you have to remember this uh, lesion right right macallum plaque so what is macallum patch what do you mean by macallum patch so macallum patch 
is the fibrotic focus seen in the posterior wall of left atrium so guys maculum plaque is a thickening of posterior wall of left atrium because of fibrosis right it is known by the name maculum patch let's see this is your left atrium and it affect the posterior wall of left atrium it's a most important mcq please remember it in the chronic rheumatic heart disease the characteristic features are buttonhole or fish mouth stenosis of valve and presence of maculum patch okay so which are the diagnostic feature now we will see clinical features of rheumatic fever so which are the diagnostic feature of rheumatic fever so you have to remember that guys uh the clinical feature according to the revised jones criteria who 2015 it's divided into major criteria of diagnosis and minor criteria of diagnosis right the major criteria for the diagnosis include rheumatic carditis migratory polyarthritis sydenham chorea erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodule you know that it is a multi systemic disease so it can affect your joint it can affect your heart it can affect your skin right it can affect your palm as well so these five are the cardinal major feature of rheumatic fever and which are the minor criteria for the diagnosis of rheumatic fever so the minor criteria include polyarthralgia right then elevated crp or esr and constant fever greater than 38.5 degree centigrade or prolonged pr interval in the ecg right so these are the minor criteria and to diagnose the case as an rheumatic fever you need to have two major manifestation so either you need to have two major criteria or you need to have one major criteria and two minor criteria right so this is the revised jones criteria given by the who for the diagnosis of rheumatic fever right so i will teach you the major criteria for the rheumatic fever in detail now so first feature is rheumatic carditis so as the name suggest it will involve it will uh, show the inflammation in the cardiac layers and usually it involve all three layers of of your heart right and the inflammation or carditis is usually fibrinous type or we can say zero fibrinous type there will be fibrosis so what will happen it will thicken your pericardium layer and it is known by the name bread and butter pericarditis it is known as bread and butter pericarditis right so the rheumatic carditis particularly affect it can affect all three layer but usually rheumatic fever particularly affect your pericardium layer and it will show the fibrinous pericarditis because of fibrosis it is known by the name bread and butter pericarditis right second important feature is migratory polyarthritis it's a most common manifestation of rheumatic fever the patient will complain the joint pain right there will be arthritis so patient will have joint pain but this arthritis is non erosive type i mean it will not destruct your joint it's a non erosive and it move from one joint to another joint without any sequel means suppose if you have knee joint arthritis then it will move to hip joint arthritis after few days you will have hip joint arthritis but there will be no residual complication after the arthritis it's a pure benign non erosive arthritis and it will migrate from the one joint to another joint without leaving any residual deformity that's why the name given migratory polyarthritis okay now sydenham chorea what is what do you mean by chorea it's a involuntary rapid purposeless movement right it's a involuntary movement that is given the name chorea so you sydenham chorea is a feature again feature of rheumatic fever you will have erythema marginatum that is the geographical red macular rash 
right it's uh, macules macular race uh, seen over the skin and it will not leave any scar there will be no scar just you have the erythematous race and the race are macule in the form of macule i mean it is not elevated lesion it's the flat lesion right and finally you can have subcutaneous nodule these nodules are painless right as the name suggests it is seen in subcutaneous area particularly it affect the extensor surface of your skin particularly elbow it affect the elbow commonly and the extensor surface is getting affected so this is about the cardinal features of rheumatic fever right so until now we have covered the introduction then etiopathogenesis morphology of rheumatic fever we have covered the clinical features and now i will teach you treatment of rheumatic fever okay so the treatment is include uh, symptomatic if you have arthritis carditis then you need to give ansaids group of drug these are the non steroid anti inflammatory drugs right and to kill the bacteria it is caused by streptococcus so to kill the bacteria uh, you need to give antibiotics right and the antibiotics is in the form of penicillin the penicillin group of antibiotics are drug of choice in the rheumatic fever and you need to do the bed rest for the fever you can simply give the paracetamol right and you need to hydrate the patient the hydration is needed uh, this is all about the treatment of uh, rheumatic fever right okay so guys this is all about the rheumatic fever hope now your basics will be clear regarding the rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease okay now i will teach you few golden points for the rheumatic fever that you need to remember okay so guys uh, can you tell me which is the most common cause of death in rheumatic fever what is the overall most common cause of death in the rheumatic fever so the most common cause of death in the rheumatic fever is myocarditis the patient is die because of myocarditis commonly right but the most common cause of death most common cause of death in acute rheumatic fever i am i am not talking regarding all over rheumatic fever in the acute form the cause of death is congestive heart failure and that is caused by endocarditis here the answer is not myocarditis it is because of endocarditis right and third golden point for our today's topic is the characteristic lesion of rheumatic fever so the overall characteristic lesion is esc of body none another than esc of body and what do we mean by esc of body it consists of inflammatory cells in the form of lymphocytes right plasma cells and you will have plump activated macrophage that is given the name anitsko cell so this these are the these are the content of your escop bodies and you uh, and you might wonder that in this escop body you cannot see any giant cells or epithelial cell although macrophage are activated they are not epithelial cell remember that here epithelial cells or giant cells are not seen you will only show the plump activated macrophage it's a plumped right and lymphocytes and plasma cells are present so guys this is all about the rheumatic fever if you like my video then subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever i am posting the new video if you have any doubt then you can ask me in the comment section thank you very much guys see you again in the next video